Good evening, everybody. Dr. Glow here with Black Girl Everything. Um, happy Tuesday. And I am here with Tania. Hello, darling. Hello, Dr. Glow, and hello, everyone that's joining us. Welcome. Hey, we're so excited to have you on today. So what is the name of your business? So I own a um, boutique travel company called Travels by Tania. What makes it boutique? So I'm not a large scale travel company. I'm more a specialized travel company with a certain niche. My niche is affordable luxury travel, basically um, domestic as well, but I really focus in the Caribbean. So because of my specialized niche and clientele, that's kind of what makes it boutique. And it's also small. It'll never be a large scale company because I like keeping it small so we can be intimate with our clients and make sure that they're getting personalized service. I think that's pretty dope. I think that's pretty dope. Thank you. So where do you live at? I'm based in Houston. Houston! Yeah, I'm currently like based in Houston. Um, I'll be living um, between Houston and Chicago by the end of the year, but I'm currently still based in Houston. Okay, what brings you to Chicago? I just love it. And instead of me making the full move, I'm just going to be based between both locations to kind of offer me some flexibility because I'm... Um, it may sound strange, but I kind of don't want to be based in one location. I love traveling. I love being free. So because um, even with my nine to five as a counselor, I'll be able to practice in both in both uh, places. So between Houston and Chicago and wherever else I may end up. First of all, that's not strange. <laughs> when I say it, people are just like, so where are you going to live? I'm going to live wherever I want to. Wherever I When you want to be there. Hmm? When you want to be there. Exactly. When it's cold in Chicago, I'll come home, you know, and, and my family is here. So I don't want to completely alleviate Houston. I mean, it's my hometown. It's where I'm born. It's where all my family is. And so I just, I'll be between both locations. No, that's definitely cool. That's definitely cool. That's one of my lifelong dreams. That's what my retirement is going to look like. But, you know, I currently have a three-year-old. So it's kind of like, oh, yeah. yeah. I have to sit still to some <laughs> For extent. Sure. But, um, yeah, like I just don't want to necessarily have to live in one place, like at all. And, you know, so with me owning a travel company, like I've met so many expats, people that work and live in other destinations. It's nothing for me to say, you know, maybe this summer I want to spend a month in Costa Rica, a month in Europe. And right now I don't have kids yet. And so, you know, I have to do that while I have the free time. And if nothing else, COVID taught us, it's kind of like whatever is on your heart and whatever you can make happen, go ahead and go for it. And so currently, I'm real free spirited and just kind of living my life as it comes to me, but still maintaining my responsibilities. And that's it. No, that sounds good to me. I think that's an amazing idea. I, I would love to do that. But like I told you, I, I got a toad around a three-year-old. So for sure. And that's where things get a little tricky. So I understand. Very much a, so. A lot of Very tricky, much so. actually. <laughs> so I get it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, no, cause, but I definitely love traveling though. So you said you do a lot of your your travel uh plans for individuals based in the Caribbean. Why the Caribbean? So because I'm based in Houston um, and it's only like two to four hour flights for Mexico, Jamaica, the Bahamas, Costa Rica, all of those destinations, that just so happened to be where a lot of my clients were traveling to. When I first started Travels by Tania at the end of 2017, I didn't really have a niche because I did not know. Like, so if you would have called me then and like, hey, I want to go to Europe. Hey, I want to go to San Francisco. Um, I would have been open to it, but now just in what I've learned and just the specialties that I've obtained since becoming a, a travel agent and travel company owner, the Caribbean just, I'm able to give a lot more. I'm a lot knowledgeable. I'm very knowledgeable about just the different places to visit. I'm certified in a lot of the destinations and most of my clientele is looking for Caribbean. During COVID, we kind of started making the push towards domestic as well because everybody mm -hmm. isn't comfortable leaving, you know, and every time we think that we're going to be able to go back to Europe and things like that, you know, you yeah. have stuff that pops up. So the Caribbean has remained safe. You know, you have the Dominican mm -hmm. Republic, which is leading with COVID protocols out of any other destination in the world right now. And so it's safe. It's easy to get to. The requirements are minimal. So it just, it makes sense for my business right now. No, that makes sense. I went to DR in October and I, it was, it was really cool. And they checked every single checkpoint, Everything. every little thing they're supposed to do. And people who didn't have their paperwork, you got shuttled off to a little room to the side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I actually um, went to an event recently with the 
tourism prime minister of the, of the Dominican Republic because I didn't even realize that they were leading like in implementing COVID protocols to protect their destination. And just so happens that one of my group trips this year is going to be in the Dominican Republic. I typically do an annual Caribbean classic with my company. So we've okay. been to Mexico, Jamaica. This year we're doing the Dominican Republic and just being able to point out to my clients or those who are just now starting back to travel or haven't really left their hometown, the fact that I'm able to take you somewhere where they have these strict protocols in place and to where I can guarantee, you know, within reason that you'll be safe, that they care about your safety, that they care about your health. I'm super excited to go back because I haven't been since before COVID. Okay. No, I think that's pretty dope. I think that's definitely pretty dope. Thank that you. Sounds cool. Sounds cool. So 2017, what sparked your interest with starting the business? So um, it's actually, I started off as a travel blogger, just to kind of give the kind of condensed story. Um, a close friend and I started a blog called The Sparkle Files. It wasn't just a travel blog. It was fashion. It was travel. It was lifestyle. It was everything. And during that time, I ended up going on a trip to um, Europe, 18 days in Europe. We started in wow. London, went to Paris, Venice, Florence, Rome, and we ended in Greece. This was, I've always planned like little trips, Vegas here, Miami there, even the Caribbean, but literally I took this trip and planned it from start to finish without ever having went. When I came back, I got a lot of questions, so I turned it into a blog post. That blog post ended up getting picked up by um, like Blobbity. A lot of the pictures were posted on some of the travel Instagram pages, like um, Travel is the New Club, Black Girls Travel Too, different things like that. And then I started getting a lot of travel inquiries. So on the Sparkle Files, which is my blog at the time, I continued posting travel things, but I realized I could only give so much yeah. without actually taking the steps to become a certified travel professional. So around 2017, I decided to see if I wanted to join the industry, um, got a host company, started the company, and then at the end of 2017, launched, but we didn't officially start until the next year. So I was a blogger first, um, and it just kind of turned into something that was bigger than me. Oh, wow. Wow. That's usually what happens to a lot of people. I said Black Girl Everything, even this or my company here is, is something much bigger than me. It's not what I ever thought it was going to be. Right. And that was just a really cool thing. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of dope. For sure. Because things take things, they, they move on their own, you know, and you can't, you can't kind of slow it down. It's got to kind of go with the ride. And especially when you're following like your passions and your dreams, mm -hmm. you know, things will grow legs without you even having to like kind of figure your way out through it. Because two years in, you know, I had to deal with COVID. 2020 yeah. was supposed to be one of my biggest travel years and every client canceled. But in the midst of that, I started shooting a travel documentary project called 92 Nights, simply named because 92 nights after the first shutdowns began in the U.S. and California, yeah. I came up with the idea to travel domestically and support Black businesses to showcase on my YouTube channel. I started in Portland. I was able to highlight some of the biggest Black businesses in Portland. And that project was something that came out of nowhere. It was really like me sitting at home, like nobody's traveling. I'm not really working. What's going on? What can I do? And it's with Travels by Tania, it's truly been a blessing because I don't have to work hard to make things happen. As long as I do my part by remaining knowledgeable and keep providing professional services, I've watched this company become one of the things I'm more proud of than anything I've ever created. No, that's dope. So tell me a little bit more about your YouTube channel. So I recently, um, so when I travel, especially with group trips, I tend to hire a professional videographer to kind of shoot travel content. So with my first group trip in 2019 to Mexico, brought along a videographer and the footage was so dope that I'm like, if for nothing else, because reels and TikTok were not really a thing then. They were, you know, TikTok yeah. was still for kids and reels were not even thought of. And so from that trip, I just decided to kind of, not for every trip, of course, but for group trips or places where I'm going where it's unique. I bring along a videographer or hire one that's local and I create content that kind of guides people and things to do or that kind of um, shows the type of services that are available with Travel Spot to Me. Whoa, fancy. And recently, February 28th, we released the first episode of 92 Nights, which is based in Portland. And the response to that was amazing because in being transparent, I was thinking about scrapping the project simply because it was taking so much and it's not something that I could monetize immediately. Yeah. And, you know, as a small business owner, we have to figure out ways to monetize to be able to support our projects and the things that we want to keep up. 
Yeah. And within the first two weeks, we had 11,000 views, 400 and something subscribers to my channel. So I'm halfway to monetization, which is a big thing for a small company owner. Yeah. And this is a project that I really was like, I don't know if I want to do it. It's so hard, you know, finding somebody consistent to edit, to shoot. And this has really been a season of from my mouth to God's ears. And so I just have been very intentional in the way I take care of my blessing, which is Travels by Tania. Wow, that's so cool. Thank you. Thank you. That's thank really, you. really cool. I'm going to have to check out your page and see what you got on there and watch that episode. Thank you. Everything across the board is Travels by Tania, social media. I try to provide tips and, you know, like how to get your passport, things to do on a long layover, destinations to visit, gyms, just to keep people traveling and to keep people traveling more intentionally. No, that makes sense. So you said you also have a nine to five? I do. I'm currently a... I feel like I, so I like to have three nine to five. So this is the reason why I'm a school counselor, but on top of being a school counselor, I'm also a licensed counselor. So outside of the school setting, I also work for a stream of hospitals um, where I go in to do mental health assessments mobily. So if somebody is admitted to the hospital when there's a mental health concern, I will be one of the contracted counselors that comes out to diagnose, determine a treatment plan, and to figure out whether or not they're appropriate for inpatient or outpatient. So that's my career side. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. What it is, is that you are living. For You're sure. You're taking the brain and the passion you've been blessed with and For you're sure. living out yeah. here. You're not wasting time. You're taking advantage of life. Thank and you should be that. very proud of yourself for that. Because a lot of Thank people, they'll sit there, have all this intelligence. Okay, but I got a good job. I'm good. Yeah. No, there's so much more. For sure. And I'm actually, you know, just in order to create some more flexibility for myself, I'll kind of be um, moving away from the school counselor setting and uh -huh. going into more professional counseling just because I want my time. You know, I want that flexibility. I want to be free. There are some things I want to do before I start a family. And yeah. Like I said, COVID taught us tomorrow's not promised. You literally have to take your time and your gifts and make the most of them while you're here because I never want to get to the pearly gates and God be like, I gave you this talent, this gift, this gift, and that gift. And what'd you do with them? So, yep. I agree wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. So, like, even like with the brand Black Girl, everything, because, like, why, what does that even really mean? It means that as a Black woman, we are powerful. We can do anything and everything. And it doesn't mean that, okay, so I'm going to do this for a little while, then I'm going to stop doing that to do this for a little while. And I'm going to stop doing that. No, we're going to do it all right now, mm -hmm. all at the same time. And it's going to work. It's yep. going to work. And you're going to have a fulfilled life all at the same time. With the, you know, the woulda, coulda, shoulda is with people like, oh, I'm not sure I'm ready. Oh, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to figure that out. I'm going to try to figure this out. You, you're you not living. You're missing out on right. time and opportunity. And I think and, it's kind of like, yeah. sorry to interrupt. No, it's cool. I'm just like, I think it's kind of like adulthood. You know, we're told in our 20s, by the time you get to your 30s, you'll have it figured out. And then your 40s and then your 50s. And no, you're always trying to figure it out. So there's never the perfect time to start your own business. There's never the perfect time to leave your own company. There's never the perfect time for anything. So it's how you make that time perfect for you and whatever, and how you're able to maximize your time. Because I also don't believe in staying so busy that, that I cannot enjoy life. But when you're working in your gifts and have found ways to create space for you to truly flourish, you'll be surprised at how many things you can manage because you're doing what you love. I agree. I agree. You're speaking right. You're speaking all of my language. <laughs> yeah. All of my language. People look at me I'm kind of weird because they say, well, you're the executive director of two different schools. You run this business and you started a nonprofit. Yeah, I did. I'll yeah, I am. And I'm going to continue to be that person yeah. and, and di in different ways, you know, but I also agree with you about time. So that I'm building out these organizations, especially um, my day gigs that I currently have. It's about building a structure and an environment where I don't have to be there all the time. For because sure. it's still going to run. But I'm still going to be the executive director who's not there all the time. So yeah. there's ways to work around that and build those things out. And then just enjoying life and taking moments out for yourself and what that really looks like. And travel sure. is one of my things that I take those moments out for myself through travel because mm -hmm. it's so important. 
Yep, same. And you know, for me, it lately it's been figuring out how to balance everything. And so one of the things that I did last um, last year, from like October through maybe November, December, I took a 10 week course through. So we have a program in Houston called the SURE program offered by the University of Houston. It's okay. a program that helps minority business owners redo their business plans. We're, par we're partnered with consultants. Um, they bring in people from the Small Business Administration and things like that. And so over the course of 10 weeks now, it's, it's grueling. It's the same thing as if you had an individual business consultant that literally was pushing you in every capacity to expand your business, to expand mm -hmm. your mindset. But when I left that program after 10 weeks, I had created a business plan that would allow my business to grow with less of me. So now right. I have two assistants. You know, now my job is to put structures and systems in place and then mm -hmm. to monitor those systems to facilitate. I don't have to be in control of everything like I used to think and monitor and manage every single thing. My job is to train, to facilitate, and then to also make sure I am living my life. Yes, amen to that. Yep. So I'm, I'm big it's on all that. about the systems. It's all about the systems. I, I think it's so odd when I go into places where, and where people are supposed to be in management, and they're sitting there and they're micromanaging everything. You're doing everything though. Why are you typing that? Don't you have an admin? Yeah. You know, it doesn't, stuff this doesn't make any sense to me. And it's, and it's crazy. You know, I have, I have an opportunity. I get a lot of interns, um, especially my, uh, my adult education program. I get a lot of interns over there. And people was, they asked me, they how many interns can you have? I was like, you can send me like 10. We're going to do 10 interns. I have plenty for them to do because yeah. I will expand the program in 15 different ways just because I have the manpower to get it done. For sure. And that's important. Like we don't have to be a jack of all trades. We just have to know what our goal is and be able to facilitate the things that we're looking for. Agreed. So, for sure. And no, it's definitely. hard as a new business owner, especially when, you know, your, your business is like your baby, you know, like, mm -hmm. like you've grown this thing, you've started it. But if you don't learn how to, to release a little bit of the control so you can get some help, you'll forever be not living your full life because you're worried about small balls that are going to drop because you're stretched in a hundred different ways. Yeah, it, it's, it's totally true. It's totally true. Like even like last, this January, I just hired, my, I hired a publicist and because I was in a fence about, okay, do I need an intern or do I need an assistant or do I go to whole, I got a whole publicist. Which has been great because my publicist comes with interns. It's amazing, right? right? But I had to realize that I wasn't going to grow and my brand wasn't going to grow unless I had somebody in the back end doing that, that grueling work For with sure. getting the bookings, getting into the magazines and all that other stuff. And the brand is just expanded. And I've only been with the company since January 1st of this year. See, that's amazing. And when yeah. you find those good people, hold on to them because- but yeah, She's going yeah. to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm telling you like you know that's another thing about being a small business owner you know you hire so many experts and you waste so much money trying to figure out how to leverage your business and get it to where it needs to be but that's all it's growing pains so I'm yeah. never upset like when I take tough lessons with money or anything like that or tough lessons to where this project fails because ultimately I believe in what I'm doing and I believe in the benefits that it has you know, for those that want to travel. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Because even when it comes down to failures, because you can't, you can't excel unless you mess up. For sure. For sure. If everything is, if you're always walking around like, oh, this was perfect. Nothing is ever perfect. Everything can be improved on. Okay. And how you do certain things can be improved on. And that's the only way you're really going to grow. And, and it's so exciting to learn new ways to fix our problems, right? And to realize, okay, I really messed this one up, but how can I actually fix it? And getting into the research, getting into nitty gritty and changing your perspective about certain stuff is so eye-opening. And I actually love it. I love when I mess up because it gives me some time to figure out something new to do. Because that didn't work. Back to the drawing board. And that is okay. Yep. And I also feel like that about my assistants, you know, like you, if you're a single person business owner, a lot of things you create on your own, you know, you start creating stuff, you have to brainstorm your way this, your way through different things. Sometimes just the benefit of having access to someone else with a different set of experiences, even if they work for you, 
You know, I've had my assistants come along like, hey, you're working way too hard on this. Why don't I turn into this kind of spreadsheet and do this? Because this is what works. You can't do it all by yourself. You cannot. It takes a village. And the sooner that we realize that, which sometimes it takes longer than others, the sooner we'll realize how much easier it makes our life when we are willing to share. I'm not yeah. a gatekeeper. If I can help you, I will help you. If you can help me, you know, different things like that. I strongly believe in just being a good person, doing what I'm supposed to do, people taking care of my blessings, and then I watch how good things come. No, I think that's really, I think that's a good idea. I like that too, because that's why I have this thing of uh, Black or everything. We have this, this whole concept. Like now, right now, you're part of the thing called a collective. So what the collective is, is just everybody who touches or comes within my path, you automatically get added into it. So now when people come to me and they're like, oh, okay, well, I need travel. Oh, hit her up or hit this person up. And I'm gonna give you my list. You go, you come on the list. Automatically, you, you get added to the list. You know, because people come to me like, you have a person who does this, a person who does this, a person who does that. Yeah. You know, check her out. She does this too. She does that. And also she actually cares about mental health. So you really want to speak to her. You know? <laughs> so yeah, so there's different aspects about it, but it's all about sharing the information, right? Sure. I don't afford anything. People call me all the time. Oh, I want to do a pop-up. What does it, your pop-ups look like? First of all, my experiences are definitely different, but mm -hmm. I'll give you five minutes of my time. Then past five minutes, you got to pay for it, but I'm going to give you five minutes. <laughs> you know Same. and just get that out there because that five minutes can save a life or save an event or convince somebody yeah i'm just not doing that because yeah. it's not as easy as things are present to me and you that's know? one of the things i've noticed too like when you're genuinely good to other people there's literally not a service or a product that most people can ask me about to where i can't recommend somebody yeah. reputable you know somebody i'm comfortable recommending that I know is going to be able to fulfill whatever the product or service goal is. And, and that's big to me. And I truly think it's just because of the way that I represent myself and my business and by the person that I choose to be. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, you know, I definitely, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Definitely. It's hard. I will definitely say to anybody being a business owner, being a black woman business owner is extremely difficult. You know, we go through enough trials without, competing with each other and, and, and without yeah. being what's stopping somebody else from gaining their success. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, you know, people sometimes look at what I've accomplished and they'd be like, oh, I want to start a travel company too and this and that. You know, this was not overnight. I'm not an overnight success. I don't always share my challenges. And that's something I'm trying to be more transparent with. Yeah. Um, but it's hard, but if you can just stick in there with whatever it is and truly master your craft, people will be amazed at the things that they can create and the visions they can bring to life. No, I agree. I think that's definitely cool because working hard definitely is what it is. And then allowing people, the hard work is hard, right? But when you create something and you see it grow just even a little bit, the personal reward behind that energy it's, it outweighs the hard work every day. It outweighs the sleepy nights. It just sure. outweighs it 1,000%. One of my cool things that I really enjoy is like when I first started out and I was doing a lot of vending events mm -hmm. and then I'll find people, people, oh, I saw you last week because I was buying your product. I was like, wait, y'all still buying from each other? You know, and, and that's what it is for me. Like the fact that yeah. we're establishing lifelong customers. And I was just doing the math in my head the other day about individuals who go and they, they go to a pop-up. They might go to a pop-up, they might make $500 on that Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. But some of those people you're never going to see again. But you'll come to a BGE event and say you make $250, right? But, oh, I didn't make as much as I did last week. But I guarantee you, the people who you sell to or people you ex you're exposed to are going to continue to buy from you. And it's the longevity of your organization, not that quick sale. Quick sales are dope. important. Yeah, the quick sales are great. They're, they're mm -hmm. wonderful. Oh, I had a great week. I, was at, I made $500. That's wonderful. But yeah. are you making that same $500 every month? For sure. That is about the longevity of it. Because it you also wants to be standing at a pop-up for six hours, you know, every single Saturday. Not me. So, okay. you know, so it's just, it's, it's just how you really look at it and what you're really focused on and within regards to your networking and stuff like that. For sure. So. And even to go back to kind of what you said about failures as well, like that's one of the things that's super important. Like you have to fail in order to learn 
how to grow and how to get yeah. your legs, you know, and I failed so many times with just different things. Like I was going to scrap 92 nights because originally when I was supposed to release it, it was supposed to be um, during COVID and in the midst of protests. You know, that's part of the reason why we were so focused on Black Lives Matter movements and things like that. Yeah. And unfortunately, we ran into some videographer issues, some getting it edited issues, just timing issues, just different things you dealt with in the midst of COVID. And I was like, maybe the project missed its mark. Maybe it missed its time. And so maybe I should scrap it. Then to get that response to it. You know, and people yeah. sharing it, people like coming back with adult feedback. And one of the things I had to really get on myself about this year, because I think that sometimes I get so caught up in the failures that I don't allow myself to enjoy my successes. And so one of the things I said this year I was going to be intentional about was giving my own self my flowers. When I accomplish mm. something, when I have a goal, when I release a project, I don't care if two people watch it. You did it. It's the Boom. way you want it to be. And I know I'm doing everything with quality and professionalism. So I don't have to worry about, you know, whether or not they're going to see it and be like, oh, she didn't spend any time on that. Oh, that project was this. That project was that. No, if I gave it my best, I deserve my flowers. And so failures are fine. Failures are great to acknowledge, but we have to stop being so hard on ourselves sometimes. Like you said, okay, you made 250 this week. Keep at it. The $500 weeks are coming, but it's the long longevity. It's your perseverance, and it's truly you just staying faithful and true to your goals. No, I agree. 1,000%, 1,000%. Totally get it, totally get it, totally get it. So what new projects you have coming up? Because it sounds like you have a lot of things coming on in your little brain over there. <laughs> so I decided when I did the um, program, the 10-week program, and kind of redid my business plan, one of the things I knew I had to focus on was making sure that I created a business that could sustain itself even if we have shutdowns or travel, um, travel cancellations and different regulations that keep the U.S. out. Because realistically, you know, we're in America, we're just doing whatever we do. And I don't know when other countries are going to fully be 100% open to allowing yeah. us to come over there if our numbers start spiking again. So in order to pivot, one of the things I launched was a project. I created a travel journal. It's called the Wonderlust Planner. And what it does is it allows people that like to plan travel on their own to map their travels out from start to finish and to um, keep track of their mementos, tickets. When I travel, if I catch a train, catch a concert, I love keeping those little tickets and things like that. So yeah. pretty much you're able to curate your own travel experience and save um, memorable mementos and things like that. Prior to COVID, I had a travel store with all kind of little neat little travel knickknacks, whatever. But I decided to pivot to one product instead. So instead of me having a travel store with all these different things, I created one product that I actually use when I'm planning my solo travels and my small group trips as well that other travelers can use whether I'm facilitating and planning their trip or not. I also have pivoted towards companies, small group and retreat experiences. I learned that one of my um, strong suits is that I'm able to plan the hell out of a group trip. So I now am mm -hmm. working with, I'm currently in the process of planning um, two retreats to Portland and another one to another destination. I have my okay. two group trips coming up, Brazil and the Dominican Republic in September and um, November of this year. So just small group and family travel will always be important to me because that's where my business got its start. But just expanding yeah. to make sure that I don't have another year like 2020 where I will sink if that part of travel is uh, minimal. Yeah, no, I understand. So you making sure you have different, multiple avenues. For sure. Multiple avenues of revenue because you have to. Yeah. You have to. You got to be getting money from everywhere because there's so much money out here to get. And that's that. the big thing. That's why yeah. nobody is your competition because it's millions of people out here. Sell yeah. your product and service the best way you can. It's enough money out here for all of us. It for really everybody. is. It so really yep. is. And that's so, why there's so much power in collaboration because definitely. when you work with others, even others in a similar field, the reach you can have sometimes, you know, instead of just doing it by yourself. I don't feel like any other travel company or travel company owner is my competition. My clients are going to be my clients. The people that book with me are going to book with me. And so I love collaborating and talking business with other travel company owners and other mm -hmm. travel agents. I love it because if nothing else, it gives me a different perspective. 
No, I got you. I got you. So let me run something back to you. So I was actually intending on being in Houston on April 23rd, right? Okay. Postpone because <laughs> flights are ridiculous <laughs> to come out to Houston. And flying my whole team out was like mm, my, yeah. my team of like four different people. Yeah. Wasn't happening because coming back into New York, we was going to have to jog here. Um, <laughs> so let me ask you, so do you work with or get contracted by organizations to handle all of their travel um, stuff and itineraries? So it's funny you say that. Um, if you would have asked me this two months ago, the answer would have been I'm striving for that. Now I'm currently planning to... Um, two retreats for two small business owners. Yeah. And I also am working with some business owners to plan their personal travel as well. If it's travel related, whether it's itineraries, hotel, air booking, yes. And I am going to be taking on, I have a couple of business clients. I'm going to put a cap on the amount of business clients I take simply because I know that people that have a business where they travel a lot require a different level of service. And I want to make sure that I don't have so many people to wear service suffers or there's a additional time lapse but right now I'm currently I have filled two of five spots for small business owners that would that want us to curate their entire travel experiences for them or their team from start to finish so yes that is something that we rolled out this year and yes so if you or anyone you know needs us to plan out your travel experiences just definitely let me know and Travel Spot Tania can help. And how do you, how do people find out this information about these services? So on my website, www.travelsbytania.com, everything is travelsbytania.com, social media, my Instagram, my TikTok, all of that. And if you go on my website and look under trip planning packages, you can find mm -hmm. the different services that I offer. Or if you're a small business owner and what you want is not listed, you can contact me from my website or simply email me at let's with an S on the end, L-E-T-S, travel at travelsbytania.com. So everything across the board, I'm easy to find, easy to work with, and all those things. That's so cool. Thank you. You're kind of fancy. I was, you know, I don't, I never walk into these interviews ever expecting anything because I love the element of surprise. And you really surprised me this evening. <laughs> I'm big on branding. And even on my website, let's just say, hey, I don't really need anybody to book my services. I like booking trips on my own. That's fine, because I'm like that as well. You can yeah. purchase a Wonderlust journal in case you want to use that as a tool. Or on my website, I have over 30 free travel guides that I've created for my personal travels because I've also been to almost 30 countries. And I've tried to create a travel blog to kind of help walk you through things to do, places to stay, et cetera, for most of those destinations. So simply free. I don't charge for my travel guides. Um, all you do is enter in your contact information, your, your email, get on the email list, and you can access them all at any time that you want. And when new ones come out, you'll get our monthly travel newsletter as well. So we try to make travel as easy as possible, even if you're not booking our services, because travel is important. The kind of person that travel molds you into, just being more worldly, more well-rounded, having a better understanding and grasp of how people view you as an American, how they view you as a woman, as a Black woman, you know, and, and just being able to leverage your talent and experiences and be worldly, you're untouchable when you're worldly. And that's when you have knowledge of stuff outside of your hometown and your base, you will be surprised at how much you also learn about yourself. You know, Definitely. I've learned a lot. I've also made a lot of mistakes traveling because, I mean, I've been traveling for since I was in my early 20s, like traveling, traveling on my own. I went out of town. You know, I've had my luggage get lost in a different country. Um, I've missed flights. I've learned how to manage 20 plus hours layovers. You know, like there are all these different tools and resources that don't benefit me by me keeping them to myself. So during COVID... I had a bunch of clients who were calling me, hey, my flight got canceled. Don't worry, I got it. You know, I could navigate you through this. You're stuck in the airport, I could send you to a website, sleeping in airports.net, where it'll tell you where you can find a lounge you can access, day tours, if your layover is long, hotels nearby, places in the airport you can sleep if you don't wanna leave. You know, and so I pretty much have learned to navigate just about most travel fiascos you can think of. 
That's so dope. That's so dope. I want to thank you so much for um, sharing with me today. You have inspired me ultimately in so many different ways. Thank you. But things that are on my to-do list on my wall over here that I need to get checked off because um, it makes a lot of sense. So thank you also for your time and energy and sharing, you know, some of the things that you're doing. And I'm hoping that a lot of people are watching and tuning in and really paying attention to how you've built this structure of your organization and how you're reaching people, because that's how you're going to increase your reach based on some of the things that you're doing in regards to your newsletter and, and being scared, not scared to give away free information right. and access to it because more people are going to come to you anyway mm -hmm. because and they want I mean, the free stuff. I, I definitely thank you for those kind words. And more than anything, I just want people to see that this was not something started overnight. I put time, sweat, blood, tears into this. I'm not perfect, but I can guarantee that when it comes to a travel company, I'm going to try to be the perfect travel company for you. You know, and it's like, I'm very transparent in what I can do, what I cannot do. If I can't book your travel experience or if I'm not comfortable, all money is not good money. You know, I definitely will refer you to another resource you can use or something like that. Like I'm passionate about travel. I want everyone to experience it. So the best thing I could do is make sure that I show people accessible travel and teach people how to travel. Hmm. Definitely do. So again, so tell me how, pe tell people again, how they can find you. So on social media, um, my travel page is travels with an S by Tania. My website travels by Tania. My YouTube Travels by Tania. My Twitter, Travels by Tania. And so if you type in Travels by Tania, you can find me on any platform. The only thing is be sure that you put Travels with an S because I found out after starting my company that there's a Travel with Tania. I'm sorry, Travels by Tania. Why am I saying, oh my God, Travels by Tania. And so I found out there's a Travel by Tania as well. But if you type in Travel by Tania, or type in um, 92 Nights, which is the title of my YouTube documentary. You can get to my YouTube channel, my website, everything, and everything goes back to the other. So if you're on my Twitter page, you can find my Instagram, my YouTube. If you're on my Instagram page, you can find my YouTube and my Twitter. So everything ties back in. And if nothing else, www.travelsbytania is a great resource for travel things. Um, I'm giving away travel guides. I mean, there's no reason if you're going to Mexico for you not to go look and say, hey, let me get these gems from Mexico because it's free. I have a free packing list on my website. I have a um, free, like my favorite travel apps. There are so many travel resources. So if nothing else, use my site to make sure you're making the most out of your travel destinations and living it up because we deserve these vacations and these downtime more than anything and we need them. That's so cool. Thank you again for your time this evening. I'll be speaking to you. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll be waiting. Sounds Definitely. Good. As much as I'm going to be traveling so much this month, because I actually got off of um, a call with one of my, my interns from my publicist, and we were just talking about additional bookings. I also wrote a book that I just launched. So I'm going to be doing a lot of touring and going um, to that location. So I kind of need people to I have my own event management company, too, that work with me. Like Affinity Blue, love them to death. But they're so busy managing all my events that I need somebody else definitely to do my travel. For sure. And I mean, I love it. I mean, it, it's, it's what I do. I would definitely love to be a resource. And it's funny you mentioned books. This is kind of how gifts lead into each other. Before my travel company, I've always been a writer. That's why writing travel blogs was so easy. I'm also the author of three best-selling novels. Um, three best-selling fiction novels. Now, I have not wrote and released a book. I think my last book was like 2017-ish. So I haven't finished a book in a while simply because I've been working on other things, but that's my first love. It's what, March? I've already read 23 books this year. Um, I'm a reader. I'm a writer. I'm a serious bibliophile, and I love to travel. And that's kind of how we got here. My love for writing ultimately is what landed me here. All right. Okay. 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 You you <laughs> you go ahead. Throw keep just throw it all in the bucket. Just keep throwing it all in the bucket. You know what? I'm about to just come to Houston just so I can hang out with you. Come on, come on, girl. I don't. I mean, all we can do in Houston is like eat and go out. But come on, I can take you to some nice restaurants. Come on. Yeah. 
But I yes, I'm about I to don't, rebook. Um, I'm telling you, I'm good. I'm rejuvenated. I gotta rebook my Houston date. I figure out what I'm gonna do it. And let me know. Like, definitely let me know so I can kind of show you around, take you to some gyms and things like that. Cause I am born and raised here. But writing is my first passion. I just have not had it in me to write a book in a few years because I've been working on travel and things like that. Maybe once I leave my career and I have more time, but yeah. writing was my first love. Like writing, yeah. You know, writers like my favorite people. After I did my dissertation, I had this growing love and respect for a writer. I, I love writers and I love readers. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You're so cool. <laughs> thank you. You thank are. Thank you, thank you. You're definitely cool. Your phone number is going to go on speed dial on my phone. You're okay. one of those people. Lock me in. That's what I'm here for. What's the title of your book and when did you release it? I released it uh, officially 222 March. Well, I did pre sales, but March 1st. By the time I launched party on 311. So it's called Memoirs. Um, it's called Hero Memoirs of Infertility. So it's a okay. fertility book. Well, is memoir. So it's my story with my wife. It's a three parts of our story. And then it's a collection of nine other stories from other people who experience IVF. Um, okay. Talking about loss and gain and children and not having children and everything that goes, the costs, the medications, everything that goes into that. Um, and I wrote the book because I wanted people to understand the perspective of a partner. So mm -hmm. my wife is one who's carried and you know, we lost a son at 18 weeks, five days. Again. And um, then we have our rainbow baby and everything else. But people are always so focused on the, the physical person who is getting all the needles and stuff like that. But let's talk about the people who actually have to give it to them. Right. And, you know, their experience with it and, and everything else like that. So it was really interesting um, how that worked out. So the book is amazing. I love it. So it's actually available on my website, which is www.blackoreverythingllc.com. Making and, sure I got uh, it, because that's if I don't do anything else, I'm going to read. Yeah, so it's definitely there. And I'm also, um, I actually have a journal as well. It's okay. called Hero the Journal, which has a lot of inspirational quotes into three different sections. Um, that's also available as well on my website. www.blackwareverythingllc.com Appreciate it. And like, definitely thank you for being open to share, you know, that journey, because that's one of the things a lot of women don't talk about, like, the struggle of getting pregnant, then what your partner may go through, you know, throughout it all, you know, and it's kind of like mental health, you know, we kind of pick and choose when the setting is appropriate to discuss those kind of things. And even me, mm -hmm. a woman in my mid thirties, I get a lot of questions like, well, when are you having kids? Why haven't you had kids yet? Why haven't you done this? And it, it's like, people don't sometimes realize what those questions do, especially if you've had issues, you know, having kids or if you suffered a miscarriage or even if you don't want kids, people cannot believe that there are people that don't want kids, you know? And so yeah. being able to transparently have those conversations and talking about it lets other women know too, like you're not in this boat by yourself. And so I think that's amazing and phenomenal to share for sure. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an amazing book. I'm really excited about it. And you know, one of the hashtags about it is called Hero the Conversation. And it is, it is that hashtag because it needs to be a conversation. A lot of people don't understand that 48% of black women actually struggle to get pregnant. Yeah. Most, a lot of people who walk around here aren't pregnant. Some, a lot of them, it's not even by choice. It's because they can't. Right. And those types of questions are so harmful to somebody's psyche. Yeah. So harmful. You're just destroying people by asking them, why do you have a kid yet? Yeah. Destroying them. And when you think about how often you get those questions when you hit your 30s, it's like, Ooh. Well, listen, I was one of those people. I used to ask people that all the time. And until I started to realize and we started going through this process and I learned, then mm -hmm. I was like, oh, oh my God, I got to stop doing that to people. Now I'll ask that as well. How are you doing? Hello. How's your wedding? Right. Like, you Great. That's <laughs> wonderful. Anything new going on around the horizon? No? Okay. Yeah. And I leave it right there because unless somebody is willing and open to come to me, but usually people that know we've gone through IBF. So people now, I mean, any setting I go to and people who know about the book, it's Okay. I had a loss too, or I'm going through IVF right now. I'm right. trying this. I'm trying that. I mean, everywhere I go, because it's constant. It's constant. Because one in four women have a miscarriage. Yeah. And it's Those important and it's necessary because people walk around with these scars feeling like it's taboo when 
This is not something that's unique to you. This is not something you have to carry on your own. Like, you know, get you a support system, find people that are willing to discuss it as well because it's not taboo, it's not just you. These are real life issues that people deal with. 100%, 100%, totally, totally, totally. I think that's the base of why I ended up doing the journal right after I did the book. It was funny because the book we was already finishing up and I was talking to my wife and I was just like, you know, I think I want to do something else to go with this. I was like, maybe I should do a journal. She was like, that's a great idea. I wrote it that night. 50 yeah. quotes came straight out my head and I was just like, then it was formatted and ready to go. And I was like, oh, 72 hours later, I had a whole nother book. That's <laughs> you how know? you know it was meant to be. It was completely because I spit it right out after one conversation. I spit yeah. right out. So, you know, and, and I like the, the journal because what it does is it gives people a tool to be able to write and express themselves because um, Hero, the actual book started off as my real journal. It oh, was wow. my notes and a random notebook about, actually, I'm sorry, on a, I used to type it on a, on a Google Doc. <laughs> and randomly on my phone or on my, my desk. Or anything, I was you can pull it up well. anywhere. Yep, and I was just constantly typing, 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 and then I was just like, yo, I'm just going to write a book, and that's what I did. Yep. Well, that's good. I definitely like hearing that, and I love hearing about books that people write that actually mean something. You know, I'm a fiction writer. I don't know if I'm ever going to be open enough to write a memoir about anything I go through, but I love reading memoirs, especially when there's a real story to tell. And when yeah. there are real lessons, you know, to be learned from it. So that's amazing. And then being transparent about that, you know, a lot of people don't share because it's hard, you know, and yeah. so that's definitely amazing. And congrats on your new book. Congrats. Thank you. That's such a big thing. Was your book launch in New York? Yes. Okay. What yeah. part of New York are you based in, if you don't mind me asking? Mount Vernon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. From money that's earning good. Mount Vernon. Huh? It's, from, it's called Money Earning Mount Vernon. Money Earning Mount Vernon? Yes. I, it's called Money Earning Mount Vernon. Like, literally. See? Imagine what I need to add to my list for my third place. <laughs> there has Seriously, to be something great you, behind if, that. If you name. look up Mount Vernon in New York and see people who actually come from this community, you'll know what I mean. Okay. That's good to know. I don't yes. know a lot about New York outside of... um. Rochester, Buffalo, and New York, New York. Oh, so you was out West New York. Yeah. That's a whole nother world over there. Yeah. It's a different planet. Yeah. That's how I feel about cities outside of Houston and Texas. Like Houston is Houston, and then the yeah. rest is everything else. But I'm sad to hear that flights to Houston are like so expensive. That makes me sad. But it's because during COVID, I hate to say it, you know, we didn't really have any protocols or things in place. So we became the city to come and visit where you could just live your best life. Yeah. You know what? It's not even that. It's the, it's the terror of always trying to fly back into New York. Mm -hmm. Because just getting into New York from anywhere, like getting to Houston is fine. I'll get there all day long. It's a flight coming home. So it's, I can get there on a flight to Houston for $115, $120. That's fine. It's the three ninety nine dollars <laughs> to fly back to New York. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And, and see, and the way I think about flights, I'd be like, oh, for 3 dollars I can go to Mexico. You know, so I'm like, I can't, I can't. Round trip. Yeah, I can't justify that. Prior mm -hmm. to COVID, I used to get flights round trip to Cancun. The cheapest flight I got, and people don't believe this, was $43 round trip. I can see it. Yeah, so, and I don't, I'm one of those people, I now, I will say this, and being transparent, I don't really choose spirit flights for my clients. But for me, please, I'll put that stuff in the backpack. Where you say you're going, $25? I'll see y'all there. Now, if my flight get delayed, I canceled. I'm going to figure it out. But I'm going to see y'all there. So, <laughs> hey, Spirit Frontier, whoever, I'm going to go. Like, Yo, I took this $25 flight to Atlanta on um, Frontier. I, I paid $104. I had four flights. I'm I was highly you, excited. My first highly. time when, when Spirit first came to Houston, um, they start having flights to Vegas first. Now it's my first time flying Spirit. You know, when, when Spirit first comes somewhere, the flights are extremely cheap. When I tell you <laughs> with that flight, people were in Spirit sales buzz balls, you know, on, on the plane. And I feel like buzz balls are like four locos. You only drink them like if you want to be super drunk. People were standing up in the aisle drinking their buzz balls. We were passing shots back and forth. And I was like, oh, this airline is nice. 
I was like <laughs> early 20s. I'm like, we're going to always fly this. Now I'm a little bit more mature and I have a little bit more money. But if I see that $45 flight to Mexico, let me get my backpack together. <laughs> y'all there. I handled a resort. Just show up. So I get it. I definitely get it. I'm gone. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. With that laugh, I'm going to end this. But this has been great. I think we can sit on here for hours. I agree. And hours, <laughs> and hours and hours. But we will well, definitely set up some more time to talk. Um, so I really want to know more about your business and obviously to share more sure. about mine and um, to see how we can continue to collaborate to you know lift each other up. Perfect. Great. So thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. This was fun. And it was my first Facebook Live. So thank you for this. And I definitely look forward to talking again in the future. Definitely. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.